What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I'm gonna share with you four tips on how you can stand out as a software engineer. And here I'm specifically addressing myself to those of you who are working either full-time or as interns as part of a greater software development team. And these tips are meant to help you stand out amongst your peers in that software engineering team. Now, three very quick caveats before we jump into the four tips. First of all, you don't have to follow all four of these tips. Some of them might speak to you a bit more than others, you might be particularly attracted to one of these tips. Of course, ideally you can strive to do all four, but it's not the end of the world if you don't. The second caveat is that these four tips really aren't rocket science. In fact, you may have heard them before, but hopefully they'll serve as a healthy reminder of things that you can do to stand out. And finally, the third caveat, this one is more of a plea, please do not judge my hair and its length. I know that it's getting completely out of control, it's kind of turning into a mullet over here, there's nothing I can do about it, so please just disregard it. With that, let's jump into the four tips for you to stand out as a software engineer. Number one, become an expert at a niche area of software development. Now, of course, here I'm using the term expert a little bit loosely. I really just mean become very good at a niche area of software development, but this is one of the best things that you can do if you want to stand out amongst your peers, because naturally, if you're really good at a niche area of software development, then very few people are going to be very good at it. And what that means is that you're going to become the go-to person whenever anybody else needs help in that niche. I saw this happen time and time again at Google and at Facebook. There were people on my teams who were particularly good at one specific aspect of software engineering that very few other people were good at, and everybody would always go to them for help, and that naturally made them stand out. Now here are a few examples of niche areas of software engineering that you may want to consider becoming really good at are CSS. If you could become really, really good at CSS, you'll see that people will treat you like a god. They'll come to you for the simplest of CSS issues, you'll point them in the right direction immediately because you'll know what you're doing, and they will think that you are a genius. Another niche that you might want to get good at is bash commands. If you become really good at manipulating bash commands, at writing bash scripts, you'll see that people will come to you for help and you will stand out. And here the possibilities are really endless. There are so many areas that you might want to specialize in, version control and the inner workings of Git, for example, or maybe a testing framework. Another area that's really good to become an expert in is algorithms and systems. Becoming an algo expert and a systems expert will really help you stand out, perhaps not within your team, but at least in the coding interviews and systems design interviews. By the way, if you're preparing for coding interviews or systems design interviews, check out my company Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform. Okay, maybe I was kidding about that last one, but you get the idea. Become very good at a niche area of software engineering, and I promise you, you will stand out. Maybe you could become an expert at promises in JavaScript. Although if you're a front-end developer, you probably should have a good grasp of how promises work. Still, food for thought. The second tip to stand out as a software engineer is to take initiative. This one applies to many other fields, but it's particularly relevant to software engineering because I think that software engineering is a field where it's very easy as a software engineer to really just do one thing coding. It's very easy as a software engineer to just turn into an executioner, so to speak. Features come in, you implement them. Bugs come in, you fix them. Tech debt comes in, you don't do anything. That leaves a lot of room for some software engineers, for you, to swoop in and to take initiative. And by the way, this is something that is especially sought after at big tech companies like Google and Facebook. They're specifically looking for very talented software engineers who are not only able to execute very well, but who are also able to take initiative when necessary. Now, taking initiative can manifest itself in many different ways. Taking initiative can mean deciding to lead a new project. Taking initiative can mean deciding to on board a new software engineer to the team, or it can mean taking it upon yourself to clean up large amounts of tech debt. Now this brings me to my third tip, which actually ties back very nicely to the first two tips, and this one is to do work that 
other software engineers don't like to do. Why would you do that? Well, precisely because if other software engineers don't want to do this work, that means very few people are doing this work and you're going to stand out by doing it. This is going to accomplish a few things. First of all, it'll give you some social clout, so to speak, because you're going to be that person who's doing everybody else a favor by doing stuff that they don't want to do. But also, it'll maybe allow you to kill two birds with one stone because by doing something that very few people want to do, you're very likely to hit a niche area of software development. So you might discover something that is niche that you can become really good at. So that'll hit that first tip of becoming an expert in a niche area. And on top of that, it might serve as a display of taking initiative. If you decide to take the initiative to write up all of the documentation on your team, I'm just coming up with a random example here, that might also serve as a great display of taking initiative. Now here there are a couple of canonical examples of things that most software engineers tend not to like doing, like writing documentation or cleaning up tech debt. So those are certainly things that you can dive into. But depending on the team that you're on or the company that you work at, there might be other things that you know nobody on your team likes to do that you might be able to do. Maybe setting up an integration test framework. Or perhaps I can share a personal example here. At Google, whenever we launched new features, we had to write these big launch documents and we had to go through approvals and go through an entire process. And engineers typically didn't really like doing that. It didn't really feel like engineering work. It was kind of this in-between work. And I took it upon myself to take care of that for my team, for the various features and projects that we launched, and that was just an example of something that I did that my teammates didn't like doing that made me stand out. I would really take a pause here and think of what things your peers, your teammates don't like doing that you could do, because this tip is one of the best ones that you can follow to stand out as a software engineer. My fourth and final tip will come as no surprise to those of you who have been watching me for a while. This one is for you to become a great communicator. I've said it before, I'm going to say it right now, and I'll keep saying it in the future. Communication is one of the most important important skills that you can have as a software engineer and, to be honest, in all aspects of life. And there are many subparts to communication that we could dissect here, like written communication, verbal communication, and those are certainly going to help you stand out as a software engineer if you're good at them. But one in particular that I want to highlight is the ability to communicate complex ideas in a simple manner, especially to people who might not be engineers or who might not have the technical context and knowledge that you have. This is an incredibly important skill that I think a lot of engineers lack, or perhaps they just don't think about it, and it's a great way for you to stand out. If you can be the person who can bridge the gap between all of the engineers, the software engineers who are very technical, and all of the other shareholders in the team, like UX designers, UX writers, product managers, technical program managers, all of the other people who might not have the same technical knowledge and who might otherwise struggle to communicate with engineers, if you can be the bridge between these two groups of people, if you can be the go-to person that these other shareholders come to when they have to talk with engineers, you will stand out. Trust me when I say this, becoming a great communicator will reap you many rewards. So these were the four tips that I had for you. Becoming an expert in a niche area of software development, taking initiative, doing work that other people don't like to do, and becoming a great communicator. I hope that you found this video insightful. Let me know in the comments below if you have a fifth tip that I didn't mention that you think can help software engineers stand out. If you're not already following me on LinkedIn and Twitter, be sure to follow me there. The links will be in the description below, especially LinkedIn. If you like short form written content, I post a lot of it there. And otherwise, don't forget to smash the like button on this video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.